Flashing back to 2016, I was a blushing bride. And, well, a very broke bride. Couldn't really afford a glamorous wedding, and while I always loved drawing, crafting wasn't really my forte. But let me tell you, for my wedding, there was a lot of crafting going on. And, as you might know, weddings are hella expensive. Slap the word wedding on anything and the price just skyrockets. Wedding flowers, wedding cake, just googling the price of just the bride's bouquet, I got a result of anywhere from $100 to $300. That doesn't include anyone else in your bridal party. So for my wedding, I made these roses out of paper. I didn't look up tutorials or origami or anything like that. I just played around with some paper until I got the results I liked. And so for this video, I'm going to show you how to make them. Let's get crafting. <music> But his comic maker, you're already married to a stunning man. Why are you making more flowers? Is it just to look super cool on the internet? Are you getting divorced? Am I getting a new dad? What dad? What? No. <laughs> My sister's getting married. Ah. <sighs> Phew. Carry on then. Okay. So, as you just heard from that, my sister's getting married, and I offered to help her make her flowers. One, it saves her money that she can use for other parts of her wedding, and two, I'll be doing it as a wedding gift for her. I'll be breaking this down into steps on how I made these flowers, that way you can make your own if you want, or if you're just curious on how I made mine. Step one, getting started. The first thing you want to do is already have your colors or theme picked out for your wedding. For my wedding, my colors were a very light yellow and green, so when I made mine, I made sure to pick colors that were close to that. But of course, you can always pick colors and things that are more closely related to you and what your wedding's gonna be. What I mean by this is that you can get super fun with it. For my flowers, I use scrapbook paper from my local art store, but if you have a certain theme for your wedding, there are some fun things that you can do. Like, for example, if your theme has lots of nature in it, then you can pick papers with cool textures or plants on them, or in the case of my sister, her wedding is black and red and also Disney themed. So she found some Disney and Marvel comics that we decided to use to make some of the flowers. I think it's a fun way to add something personal to your flowers. People might not notice it from far away, but you'll obviously know that it's special to you. Step two, get all the supplies you need. For just the basic rows, you will need scrapbook paper, scissors, a pencil, a stencil, which we'll talk about in a bit, a glue gun, glue sticks, flower stem wire, and then any other leaves, flowers, or accessories that you want to add to your bouquet. You'll also want a piece of sturdy paper to make a stencil for your petals. Cardstock can do the trick for that. When I made my flowers for my wedding, I cut out leaves myself and then just bought these little beads to poke out and give them some dimension. But for my sisters, we decided to buy a couple different small flowers and some darker green leaves that we can attach after the initial flowers are done. So now that we have all the things, let's get on to step three, which is prepare the petals. Typically a rose petal is more of an organic oval shape, but for mine I thought it would be cute to have my petals in sort of a heart shape. The size and shape in that department is really up to you. Mine ended up being about two inches tall and about two and a half inches wide. The bigger it is, the bigger your rose petals will be, but this size worked great for me. Sketch it out with a pencil onto your cardstock paper until you get a shape that you like. Cut it out or cut out multiple if you have people helping you and then trace a bunch of petals on to some of the paper that you got. If you're worried about ruining your cardstock paper, you can always make a trial rose on some regular computer paper first. Now, tracing and cutting out each petal is honestly the thing that takes the longest time, but I found the best way and time to do it was in moments where I was just chilling on the couch watching stuff after work. But if you have a bridal party that is eager to help you, you can always ask very nicely to your friends and family if they can either trace petals onto the paper or help you cut them out. I was hanging out with some of my friends one day and was working on them and they just jumped in and helped me. It was super nice. And just to ease their worries, tell them it doesn't matter if they come out wobbly or anything like that. Once they're all made into roses, you can't really tell if there's any imperfections. Now also, there's honestly no telling how many petals you'll need in the end, but I tend to keep the different kinds of petals I made into little snack bags just to keep track of them. Since really the size of your flowers will come down to how big you want them to be. Step four. Four, prepping your flowers for assembly. For this, you'll want to take your stem wires and cut them to the length you want. For me, I just ended up cutting them in half. As long as you have enough room for the rows and enough length for you or your bridesmaids to hold the base, then any length is fine. 
Grab whatever leaves or accessories that you want to attach on hand and get a handful of petals. Next, you're gonna kind of curl the petals back. This will work whether you're doing oval shaped petals or heart shaped ones. You don't need to curl the sides or the bottom or anything like that since we're gonna be using the sides and bottom to be gluing all of the petals together. Then once your hot glue gun is locked and loaded, you'll place a little line of glue to the front left side of your petal, enough to attach your stick to. Whee! Step five, making the flower. This part, as you can imagine, is kind of tricky and honestly for me, it came down to what kinds of paper I was using. Stiff, sturdy paper was a little bit tougher to form while softer, textured paper worked the best. But honestly, once your whole flower is finished, it looks pretty regardless, so don't be discouraged if some of your paper tears or if you need to bend it a bit to fit to your will. Before we start this part, let me just apologize right now for the quality of the footage. Watching it back, there were many moments where I pulled the flower off camera to look at it and make sure it was looking alright, so there will be a lot of back and forth here. Bear with me, please. So with the first petal, you're going to want to wrap it as best you can around the base of the rose. It can be loose or tight, it's really up to you. If you see the wire in the middle and you don't like that, wrap it tighter, but honestly, I never really noticed. Then, once you've wrapped it around, you're going to glue the other end of the petal to the base of the rose. Be careful, obviously you're working with hot glue, so there will probably be moments where you get hot glue on yourself, so just be super, super careful. Like if you're going to be trying this for yourself and you're not getting married, obviously if you're getting married you would probably be of age, and if you're not of age, then obviously you should have the appropriate people with you, such as an adult, to do the things with the hot stuff and, and things and stuff. Anyway, you can see here that I am now deciding to roll the petals. You can tell it's been a while since I've made these. I would prep a couple beforehand, but it's honestly up to your own flow how you do this. Now start grabbing more petals and wrapping them around the rose. For this part, I try to make sure that the next petal is in a spot where it needs another petal sticking out so it looks even and then I keep going from there. This is probably the best way to make sure you get as even of a rose as you can. Continue repeating these steps until you get it to the size that you want it. You can of course make them bigger than mine or smaller or even have bigger roses of one color and smaller of another. The choice is yours. Then after you get to a stopping point, you end up with this. Each flower took me around three to five minutes to do, but once you get into a flow of it, it moves on pretty quickly. Now while we go through some footage of me making a couple more types of roses here, I shall give you some other tips and tricks that I figured out while making these myself. But if you end up trying to make some yourself and have any questions, feel free to leave a comment and let me know. Okay. First, depending on the paper you have, you might need to trim some of your petals. There are moments where I either set a petal up too high or while curling it around the rose and trying to position the petals how I wanted, I tore the paper. This is where your handy dandy scissors come into play. I'll either cut off a bit or trim the part of the area that I tore to make it look seamless. Once your flowers are kind of bunched together and surrounded by other things, you won't really notice the bottom, so if it's not perfect at the base, don't worry. Next, if you have some flowers that didn't turn out to be your favorite and you don't want to waste them by not including them in your bouquet, you can always just detach it from the flower stem and use them as decoration on some of your wedding tables, or you can make some boutonnieres for your spouse and their bridal party if the roses are too small, or if you have some extra petals and you didn't have enough to make a whole nother rose, you can sprinkle them over tables as decorations or down the aisle. Multi-purpose, we love that. Then lastly, putting it all together. Now this obviously comes to your personal taste and preference. In the end, it it was just cheaper for me to buy paper and make them than it was to buy fake or real flowers and assemble them together, so this is just a very simplified bouquet. But really, you can add whatever you want. I'm pretty indecisive and very easygoing, so I'm not worried about things being perfect, but of course if you have a crystal clear vision, you should absolutely go for it. Just lay them all out and put different combinations of flowers and accessories together to see what you like. Then once you decide on a mini bouquet, then you can buy the rest of whatever you need and combine them however you want. With just just what I made for this video, I tested out a version of the bouquet with the white flowers and comic flowers, and a version with just the red and black to see what my sister liked. The great thing about this is that since the stems are wire, you can easily take them apart and reassemble them until you get what you want. For me, I just covered the base of my bouquet in a really pretty, glossy, strong scrapbook paper and then tied some green ribbon to it. But for my sisters, we'll be covering them up a bit to make them sturdier and using black and red ribbons. 
What's nice about this is that they'll last forever, so you can disassemble your flowers after the wedding and put them in a shadow box or whatever you want to do with them. I keep mine in a display case in my dining room. But I really like the look of these roses and the fact that they were handmade adds something really personal in my opinion. But whatever you decide to do for your wedding, I'm sure will be perfect. Good luck to you. If you're curious with what I had in this video, I can pretty much make most of the bouquets for the bridal party. I'm not sure if I have to go back to the store yet, but what I've spent so far is under $100, so not too bad. If you like this and want to check out other ways to make beautiful paper flowers to spice up your bouquet, then I recommend Skillshare, who's the sponsor of this video. If you're new here and you haven't heard the news, Skillshare is an online learning community with so many classes you'll have to stay up for hundreds of years just to watch them all. They got classes on facial expressions, animation, crocheting, you can even make tiny little baby shoes! for babies! I mean, I guess you can make them for yourself, like put them on your fingers and do a little dance, but that's besides the point. They got lots of great reasons to join as well. They're ad-free, epic, they have new classes every week, epic, and their entire catalog is also available with subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese, and German. Epica! <laughs> God, what the heck am I doing? Now, if you like the flowers we learned to make today and want to learn how to make others, well, there are tons of paper flower videos on Skillshare. I would really recommend the class Create a Realistic Paper Rose with Ellen Espagne. She really goes in depth on each step and each petal of the flower that she adds to her roses. It was a simple and easy tutorial that was only about 30 minutes and was super thorough. If that has got your craving for learning hungrier than ever, then head on down to the link in the description and pinned comment. The first 1,000 and people to click that link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can explore your creativity. So give it a try, keep making incredible stuff, and thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. But that's it for this one. Like I said before, if you have any questions about this process or have other suggestions for crafty things you want me to try, leave it all in the comments down below. As always, videos like this are possible because of my amazing banana members and people like you who like, comment on, and share my videos. I appreciate you all stopping by and I hope that we can draw together again soon. Bye guys.